Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We all wonder about this kind of stuff, the spirit world, people who have crossed over, all of that. Is there proof of this, that people can communicate, people can somehow feel the energy? He offers that proof. Real interested to dig into it with this gentleman. He's a spirit medium, owner of Nocturnal Nation, and he's got a YouTube channel that has all the proof right there. Danny Kelly joins us here on the program. Hi, Danny. How you doing? I'm doing great, Steve. How you doing, brother? I'm doing well. Very well. Um, when you say you're a spirit medium, I honestly have never heard that term. I've heard of psychic mediums, psychics, mediums, spirit medium. What does that actually mean? It's where the other mediums tend to focus more on the needs of the living. I focus more on the needs of the dead. When you say the need, what do you mean? Um, there are some spirits I come across who feel stuck where they're at now. They don't know how to leave where they're at. Um, some have just randomly appeared to me as like, hey, dude, I need help right now. So that's that's more of the needs of the spirits and to let other people know that, hey, they're not the scary ghoul that you see on, on TV. You know, um, the majority of what I deal with are positive spirits. When you say need, could it also be, and I've heard this before, and I'm trying to validate it, where somebody passed, but they haven't fully crossed over. Kind of, yes, I don't sir. know what the term would be, but they're in yeah, transition. It, and it could be for years. It could be years. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've helped spirits like that, brother, who have been here, some from the um, Revolutionary War or even farther back. Wow. Who have never had the opportunity. No one has ever presented the opportunity for them to cross over. And by crossing over, what I mean is a spirit is stuck. They don't know where to go from where they're at right now. So they'll come to me and they'll say, look, can you help me? I'm stuck. I don't know what to do here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll say a prayer for them and um, let them know that where they're going is not a bad place. And I, I lead them toward the light, not physically, but through speaking and through my emotions, I help lead them into the light where they go to their final destination. What would cause them not to be able to, to meet that destination right away? Well, um, there's many things, man. Um, one, if someone is, is killed like immediately, just like that, didn't have a chance to get their last affairs in order, none of that stuff, they're stuck here because they feel like they still have a need. They still have something that has to be done. Um, that's one of the reasons, you know, for that kind of death, or maybe it's someone who committed suicide and they don't feel worthy to cross over. Uh, or someone who lived a really harsh life and they don't feel like, Hey, if I cross over, you know, I'm scared of what's going to happen next. Wow. So if somebody came before you and said, you know, their mom or dad passed over, would you be able to give them an update, let them know what, what's going on, how they are? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the things that I do is I actually channel spirits. So, um, if I'm with a person, like you just said, their parents just passed away. They, they don't know what to do. They didn't get the chance to say, I love you. They didn't get a chance to say goodbye. I will allow that spirit to speak through me and say whatever needs to be said, that conversation. And nine times out of 10, when that happens, I'm not even aware afterwards of what was said. Are you saying because you're the conduit and it just kind of just flows yes, through? Exactly. Exactly. It's like my personality gets pushed to the side and they step in. Um, wow. It, and I always make sure before I do that, I let the spirits know that after this conversation, you must leave. You cannot stay here. Does it freak you out? <laughs> it, it freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine it not. Uh, you know, even if you've done it multiple times, um, just knowing that you are making that connection. Now, for those who are skeptical, where does the validation come in? Whenever I'm speaking to a spirit and they can give historical facts, they can say, yes, I was here at this time. And then someone can look it up. Oh yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. 
that's that's one validation. The other is I do use a couple of different pieces of equipment that it picks up electronic frequencies. So when a spirit comes near, they light up. Wow. Yeah. Uh, um, this is my belief, and I, I want your your take on it. When when somebody and that only let me let me preface that I've worked with psychics. I've launched careers of psychics, big ones, big names for many years. Right. I never really, I knew, you know, and I'm skeptical, even though they're friends, I'm skeptical. Yeah. I'm always like, yeah. hey, wait a minute, give me something more. Right. And it wasn't until my mom passed five years ago that I, that. thank you. I feel like I finally got it. When somebody passes, their energy is always here. It's, yes. it's, it doesn't go away. The body goes away. Like the, you know, the car doesn't run anymore. Right. Car doesn't last forever. Neither does the body. Right. But the spirit is here because I feel her presence almost all the time. I'll ask for a sign. I get them. They're very specific. I mean, very specific to the point where you, you can't deny that exactly. <clears throat> excuse me, it was being done. It's, and if it supports you to say, you know, I saw a ladybug today or um, I, I, I saw a penny and that, that reminds me of my dad. That, wonderful. If that's for you, I'm, I'm on specifics and I get them, but that, that was my wake up to energy is always here from the person that's, that's no longer here, but they are, I guess, in spirit, I guess that's the way you, I, the best yeah, way to say it. Exactly. Um, when you said penny, it reminded me something that happened. My, um, my girlfriend, we lived together and her mom was living with us. She passed away, I think it was February, last of February. But her name is Debbie, my, my girlfriend. She said, um, Mom, if you're here, leave me a penny. And two pennies fell from the ceiling and hit her on the head. You can't get more real than that. So when you first, I'm going to be honest, Danny, when you first said penny, I'm like, all right, you know, we walk in the parking lot, you look down, there's a penny. Right. If it was a penny laying down, I could understand that. But seeing it come from nothing and then being there. And then that same night, we were out in the garage and I call her my mother in law. My mother in law, she was big time into sewing whenever she was able to. And we, she and I both, Debbie and I both were in the garage and we both saw this at the same time. We saw a sewing needle fall from the from out of the air and hit the floor right in front of Debbie. There are people who are going to say, be okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah. You know, wow. and I get it. I get the skepticism in that, you know, because it is, it's, it's hard to, to fathom sometimes, but sure. myself, I've been able to communicate with spirits man, since I was three. So for me, I don't know any other way. And I, and I get it. I don't communicate, but I asked for the signs. And the first one, I could fill 15 podcasts with, with, with the signs I get from my mom in just the last couple of years. Oh yeah. Specific. But the first one that I ever got was about two years, year and a half, year and a half after she passed. And I had something coming up that was very um, potentially life-changing. I was heading to okay. a meeting and I just vibed her the night before. I'm like, mom, please make it turn out. Okay. Just get, you know, just show me you're there. Just would give me something. Wake up the next right. morning, did the same thing, drive to the meeting, pulling into the parking lot. It's about 9 22 AM. And I looked down at uh, the energy drink that I had in my console. And it was her birthday on the expiration date. Oh, wow. And I was like, Oh, okay. Went to the meeting, turned out perfect. No issues whatsoever. And I told it to a friend of mine and he's like, well, all right, you know, one in three sixty five chance. And I'm like, all right, I get it. I get it. <laughs> but he says, but hold on. What are the chances that you're looking at the energy drink and the expiration date at that moment? Who looks at that? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> it doesn't right? But I did. And it was what I asked for. And I got what I asked for. And that's just one of many. I mean, she throws her name to me all different times. I, just, I get what you're saying. Like, so when, yeah. when you tell me a penny dropped out of the ceiling I'm, or two, okay, <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, I'm all right. I get it. Uh, yeah. Having witnessed it. You say this goes back to when you were three. Tell us about your journey. Um, 
in June of 1969, my father passed away. I turned three in September of 69. In October of 69, my dad came to visit me. And we had a conversation because he felt like I needed that. And I did need it because I was only three when he passed. And I was still three when he received me, but he came to see me and it wasn't scary. It was like my dad just walking in the room and talking to me. But it's, it opened a door for me that I chose to leave open. Now, growing up, when I would see things like this, I would tell my, my parents about it. And they would be like, because oh, my mom had remarried at this time. Um, and they would say, Danny, this, this is your imagination. It's your imagination. So over the years, I kind of stifled it down a little bit. I tried to make sense of it so many different ways. I've tried to elicit drugs. I was a preacher for 15 years. All of this is trying to make sense of what's going on inside of my head. So finally, I just embraced it. And I said, you know, this is me, like it or not, this is who I am. And because of that, I've lost pretty much every one of my siblings. Because they didn't believe. Right. It's, and it's not that I try to force it on them. They just like, you know, well, oh, you're demon possessed. We're not going to talk to you no more. I don't think so. It's a shame that they they think that way and they're not open to it because. Yes, sir. You can tune out. So Anybody can tune out now if you want. It's okay. But I'm going to tell you that I believe in energy. And yes, I'm skeptical. I want, yeah. you know, I and I want answers like anybody else wants answered answers. Can I present something to you and get your feedback? Absolutely. Okay. Had a friend very close pass recently, mm -hmm. found out yesterday. <clears throat> she passed within hours of the an anniversary of the day my dad died when I was 21. Wow. Also passed on the birthday of my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Also, that was the day I took my son to college for the first time. All wow. of these on the same day or within hours of this is I'm talking a few days ago. That's this yeah, is this very is not recent. a coincidence, Steve. It's I know not it's not. I know it's not. But I don't I'm trying to put the pieces together. It's like my relationship with this one friend and it was. um, It was big in terms of career uh, journey, big, big. So right. it major loss. But that that ends her life ends but it's the beginning of you know my son but then it's also was the day that my dad's life ended and i, I don't know what's there i'm trying to put the pieces well, together I, I don't want to freak you out man but i hear a, a woman's voice over on this side of me and she wants to let you know man that, that she's okay and that you're going to be okay and things everything is going to work out exactly the way it's supposed to well, that's the law of the universe. Might not be the way you want it to. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my that's my motto, man. I live by that. You know, yeah. if something bad happens, well, it was supposed to happen to stop me from doing this or, or keep that from happening. A hundred percent. And it's, I believe it's part of the plan. What's the plan? Maybe someday we'll know. Maybe someday right. we won't. Who made the plan? I don't know. If you believe in a higher being, a God, then okay. If you believe in the universe, whatever the universe is, okay. If you just believe in, you know, whatever, then that's okay right. too. Right. Yeah. Um, but there are, I believe there's no coincidences out there. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that, that mainly came from my time as a preacher. You know, I, I picked that up and I, it's kind of been my motto ever since. You know, everything mm -hmm. happens exactly the way it's supposed to. We don't understand it sometimes, but that's the way it is. Yeah. There's a song. It's great. Um, if you ever Google the lyrics by a uh, musician singer named Dan Fogelberg, and he, he was around in the, in the seventies and yep. he has since passed. I think he had prostate cancer. Uh, it's got a song. It wasn't a hit. It was on an album, um, but a known album track called part of the plan. And it's exactly what we're talking about. And basically wow. the opening lyrics are, and I haven't heard in a long time, but you know, one day you're, you're feeling holy and humble. The next day you're starting to crumble. Um, it's a part of the, there's a part of the plan. And one yeah, day I we'll, got to check that out. 
Oh, I'll Google it. Yeah. And and the, the lyrics basically are one day we'll all understand. One day we'll all understand. Part of the plan. Um, maybe when you won't be here when you when you understand the plan. Maybe right. Be somewhere else. Tell me about when you connect with those on the other side. What you get, what you hear, like you said, a female. Um, I'm sure if we drill down deeper, might might you know figure more out whether it was my friend pass or who mom. Right. I don't know. I don't know. Um, what do you hear? What do you see in that? Well, it's very interesting. Um, when I'm talking with a spirit and they want to show me or they want to tell me what happened to them to cause their death, or they want to show me something that they want to get done. They actually show me, and it's like I'm looking at a video. I can see the video in my mind. I can I can describe in detail everything in the video. And the feeling inside that I get is just, it's like the most warm sensation you could ever feel on the inside. Um, occasionally, occasionally I run across a bad spirit, not very often. And when I do, I always get that really cold, numb feeling and my back starts hurting. So. Hmm. That's got to get scary. <laughs> like you're feeling yeah, something. Yeah, it, it can be. It, it can be really scary. There have been several, I, I, I can't even count how many times that I've encountered some bad spirits. One had me pinned against the wall. One knocked me down across the graveyard. I've been scratched, screamed at. Just, it is crazy, man. It's crazy. Wow. So on your YouTube channel, tell us about that. Well, on my channel, man, I, um, I post videos of paranormal investigations that I do, whether it's someone who had called me to their home for whatever the case may be, or I find a place while I'm out scouting. I always go to these places and I always film when I go. I always make sure that the people know, look, I'm going to be filming. I got a waiver you need to sign. And I've, so far, I've never had any problems with that. But going into these places, it, it can get kind of scary sometimes. And I try, I, I don't want to sound facetious, but I, I really love the scary, scary. I really do. But. I don't encounter that that often because it takes a heck of a lot to scare me because I've seen so much mm -hmm. witnessed so much. So I'm always out for that scare. So <laughs> when I'm on my channel, you will see sometimes where I, I do get scared. As a matter of fact, the, um, there's one video that I posted that I can't for the life of me remember the name of it, but I was at a home that was a murder suicide home. And my plans were to stay overnight and that ended about midnight whenever I encountered a bad spirit there and he was telling me that he wanted to kill me so I was like nope this is over I'm going home and that that's actually on, on one of the videos that they did wow <laughs> yeah <laughs> I I've, I'm kind of in the same mindset you are where you said nothing scares you yeah. In my journey, my, my mantra is nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. Yeah. I've, I've seen, in, even in the last three, four years, it's, you know, things you never thought would happen, happen. Uh, just, it doesn't rock my world where in the right. past, maybe things would like, what's going to happen? How am I going to do this? How am I going to handle it? Next. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, yeah. it is, it, I guess it's, you know, maybe resilience and things like that. Um you say paranormal investigations. So would somebody who thinks their house is haunted call upon you to investigate something like that? Yes, sir. They would give me a call. You know, I schedule time to meet up with them. Of course, like I said, the waiver they have to sign. And I go into their home. And the first thing I do is I walk around the entire home, see what I feel. You know, and if I feel anything negative, I let them know you got something negative in here. If not, I let them know, you know, what I'm picking up on. And then I'll go about my investigation. And that basically entails me going to the spirit and finding out who they are, when they died, how they died, 
what it is they want here. Why are you in this particular location? And can I help you move on? So when when a spirit is is in a location, call it you know haunted house, they're there for a reason. They need something, or or like I believe you said before, they're afraid to go to a destination. Yes, sir. Wow. Yeah. Um, it, it happens more often than people would believe. I, dude, I have been sitting in my home just eating popcorn, watching TV, and all of a sudden a spirit will show up. And say, look, uh, I need some help here. And I, I'll stop what I'm doing, help them out, and get right back to what I was doing afterwards. But yeah, these, these houses that I go to, uh, the spirits there are definitely for a reason. I've, I've been to some, well, I've been to one particular house. Um, they go on my channel, look, it's the Jameson House Honings, I think that's what it's called. But that house was taken over by slave spirits. And I had to help the spirits move to their final destination because the family was scared of them, you know, because they would, they would turn the TV on at night. They would turn the faucets in the, in the bathroom on, you know, they were very invasive, but the spirits were, they were adamant that that was their place, you know, because the land that the house was on used to be uh, a part of the land that the, their master, I guess, what you call them, gave them that land whenever they became free. So they they felt like that was their property and no one else should be there. Are you ever fearful of bringing them back with you? Like you went to a location? Well, and I've done that before. And yes, it is very scary. <laughs> very scary. This one cemetery I went to, there was a lady there by the name of Elizabeth. Um, I think her last name was Adams. But I saw her spirit while I was there. Didn't think nothing of it. I went home, went outside to feed my, um, to walk my dog. And I saw a mist by my office window at the home. And um, found out that she had followed me home. And she stayed there like two weeks. And I finally convinced her, you know, this, this is not where you're supposed to be at. How do you and get them to leave? Though, like, you know, it's like... I'll, for, for her example, um, I went back to the graveyard and for all intended purposes, I dropped her off. You know, she, I guess she went with me and felt stuck or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why she did it. But when I went back to the graveyard, she stayed there. She didn't come back with me. Do, do you sage? Is that, is that useful? Yes, I do. Okay. I definitely sage. I sage. I have anointing oil, holy water. You know, I go through the whole, whole gambit of that stuff. Wow. So just about out of time, I want everybody to know if they're sensing a, a presence, call it a ghost or spirit in their home. Can you investigate virtually? Do you travel? And then side note, you know, if somebody just wants to make a connection with somebody who has passed over, can you do that virtually as well? Absolutely. I've done several of those virtually. Um, normally what they'll do, they'll contact me. I'll set up everything, send them a link. We'll be just like you and I are right now. And as long as I can see the person, see the location, I'm good. Wow. And as far as traveling, I do travel. So how do we find you? I don't know if you have a website. I know you have the YouTube channel. Um, I don't have a website right now. Mainly my contact is my phone number, which is 910-813-1327. And call me, text me, whatever you need, feel like best for you to do. And I will immediately get right back to you. And YouTube channel, Nocturnal Nation. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Wow. Uh, Danny, great talking with you today. Learned a lot. This you. is, um, you know, territory I've, I've dipped my toe into, but never really um, fully understood what's going on there and why right. spirits are stuck sometimes in the middle. Uh, yeah. you know, fascinating. And uh, thank you for being here today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate it. And I look forward next time we get together. Yes, sir. Thanks. All right. We're coming mm -hmm. right back. 
Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.